Welcome to Crime Pulse Stories, where we unravel the darkest true crime stories. Today, we dive into a seemingly ordinary day that spiraled into chaos and mystery. What turns a simple neighborhood search into a scene of a crime? June 23, 2016 dawned bright and sunny in a quiet neighborhood of Columbus, Ohio. The streets, typically tranquil and friendly, were bustling with the energy of an early summer day. It was on this day that Christopher Amos, a local resident known for his enthusiasm for new gadgets, found himself in a dilemma. His drone, a recent addition to his collection of tech hobbies, had gone missing. Desperate to recover his prized possession, Christopher sought the help of his neighbors, sparking a communal effort to locate the lost drone. Among those who stepped forward to assist was Candy Arthurs, a 45-year-old grandmother widely regarded for her kindness and community spirit. She, accompanied by her young grandchildren, a 6-year-old boy and an 8-year-old girl joined Christopher in his search. The group canvassed the neighborhood, their eyes scanning the skies and backyards, navigating through the interconnected alleys that framed their homes. This simple act of community assistance, begun with innocence and helpful intentions, was about to spiral into a scenario no one could have predicted. The search for the missing drone took a horrifying turn just moments later. As the group rounded a particularly secluded corner of the neighborhood, a sudden and violent attack disrupted the peaceful afternoon. Without warning, Candy Arthurs was brutally stabbed in the chest, a shocking act of violence that left the group reeling in panic. Her grandson, too, sustained a knife wound to his shoulder, though thankfully less severe. The assailant, concealed by the confusion and speed of the attack, fled the scene immediately, leaving behind only chaos and fear. In the immediate aftermath, terror took hold. Candy, despite her severe injury, managed to lead the terrified children back towards their home, her steps growing increasingly labored. As they reached safety, Candy's daughter, upon seeing the wounds, frantically dialed 911. The call was a chaotic blend of cries for help and urgent pleas for an ambulance, the operator struggling to piece together the events from the distressed explanations offered. This sudden violence thrust the neighborhood into a state of alarm, with residents and authorities alike grappling with the shocking breach of their peaceful existence. As the police began their investigation, the mystery deepened. No clear motive was evident, and the identity of the attacker remained shrouded in uncertainty, leaving everyone to question how a simple community endeavor had spiraled into such a tragic outcome. The police were quick to respond to the 911 call. Upon arrival, officers were greeted with a chaotic scene, a distressed family and two injured individuals in urgent need of medical attention. The crime scene, a typically quiet alley now marked by signs of struggle, was immediately cordoned off. Forensic teams set to work, collecting evidence while detectives canvassed the neighborhood for witnesses and any surveillance footage that might have captured the incident. Each piece of evidence collected was meticulously tagged and recorded, aiming to piece together the sequence of events that led to this unexpected violence. As the investigation progressed, attention turned to Christopher Amos, the man who had initiated the drone search. Detectives noted inconsistencies in his initial statements and his visible distress when questioned. To delve deeper, police arranged a formal interrogation, aiming to understand Christopher's actions and whereabouts during the attack. The interrogation room was set up meticulously, a cold, sparse space designed to heighten the psychological pressure. Christopher was brought in, seated across from two seasoned detectives ready to employ a mix of direct questioning and psychological tactics intended to unravel any deception. Suspicion around Christopher intensified. His recent proximity to the crime scene, coupled with the odd disappearance of his drone, which had prompted the search, made him a central figure in the detective's narrative. 
Rumors and half-whispers among the community members also fueled this focus, painting him as a man under a shadow. The interrogation aimed to either corroborate his story with the facts or catch him in a lie that could lead to more serious implications. As the detectives prepared their questions, the tension in the air was palpable, setting the stage for a confrontation that could either clear Christopher's name or entangle him further in the web of suspicion. The interrogation of Christopher Amos began with a stern, methodical pace as detectives laid out the facts of the case before him, emphasizing the severity of the situation. The room was stark, the atmosphere tense, the only sounds were the quiet hum of the fluorescent lights and the shuffle of papers as detectives presented photos from the scene. Detective Christopher, you were the last known person to be seen with Candy and her grandchildren before she was attacked. Can you walk us through what happened during the search? Christopher, we were just looking for my drone. I didn't see anyone else around. It was just us. And then, I don't know, it all happened so fast. As Christopher recounted his version of events, his voice wavered, a mix of confusion and fear evident in his tone. The detectives probed deeper, challenging inconsistencies with pointed questions designed to elicit a clear response. Detective, you say it happened fast, but you were right there. Candy was severely injured. How did you not see the attacker? How did you lose sight of what was happening? Christopher, I... I might have turned around for a second to look further down the alley. I really don't remember everything perfectly. Detective, but you understand how this looks. You organize a search, you're right there, and you turn around. It doesn't add up, Christopher. We need the truth. The room's atmosphere thickened with each passing moment, the emotional peaks hitting as Christopher's frustration and fear became palpable. His hands shook slightly, and his gaze often fell to the floor. Christopher, I know how it looks, but I didn't do anything. Why would I hurt her? She was helping me. Detective, we're trying to understand that ourselves. People do things under stress that they wouldn't normally do. Was there an argument? Did something go wrong? The detectives watched Christopher closely, observing his reactions. They pushed for emotional responses, hoping to crack his composure and uncover any signs of guilt or deception. Christopher, overwhelmed by the intensity of the interrogation, fluctuated between defensive outbursts and moments of apparent despair. Christopher, there was no argument. I was thankful for the help. I... I don't know why this happened. This is all just a terrible mistake. Detective, mistakes happen, yes, but a woman was attacked, Christopher. A woman died. We need more than confusion and gaps in memory. As the interrogation neared its end, the detectives summarized the points of contention, leaving Christopher to ponder the gravity of the situation. The emotional turmoil was evident as he sat, head in hands, grappling with the reality of his predicament and the serious accusations he faced. After months of legal proceedings, the case reached its climax in the courtroom. Christopher Amos, facing overwhelming evidence and a community's shaken trust, chose to enter a plea of guilty to involuntary manslaughter. This plea was part of a deal that resulted in an 18-year prison sentence, a resolution that brought mixed reactions from the community. The impact on the community was profound. Candy Arthurs was remembered as a kind-hearted neighbor, her tragic death leaving a void. Residents grappled with a sense of betrayal and loss of security, prompting neighborhood watches and community meetings aimed at rebuilding the once trusted bonds. This case reminds us of the delicate fabric of trust that communities rely upon. The unexpected violence shook the foundations of neighborhood safety, challenging us to reflect on how well we truly know those who live around us. If this story moved you or made you think, please subscribe to our channel and share your thoughts in the comments below. What measures can communities take to protect themselves while maintaining trust? Let's discuss.
Stay tuned for our next episode, where we'll explore another gripping case that tests the boundaries of justice and community resilience. Thank you for watching. This episode was produced with the assistance of legal and psychological experts to provide insight into the criminal justice process.